Welcome to the Vine Resources Podcast Show. Welcome to another edition of the Vine Resources Podcast Show. Today, I'm delighted to have with us Daniel Lindberg. Daniel is the co-founder and CEO of Quickspin in Sweden. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being here. Dan- yeah, no, thank you so much. And uh, look, it's great we're actually doing this also uh, via FaceTime today, uh, but this is for our podcast listeners. So, Daniel, why don't you give us a brief introduction about uh, your good self and quick spin, please? So, my name is Daniel. Uh, I was uh, one of three co-founders of Quickspin. We are a software development company operating mainly in the uh, social gaming space as well as the online gambling space. So we predominantly develop uh, slot machines for uh, uh, we're B2B software provider providing, developing slot machines for uh, online gambling operators and for free to play social operators. Uh, Fantastic. And and you're six, about 70 employees in uh, mainly in Stockholm? Yeah, so we were founded about six and a half years ago, so we're now 70-ish employees in total in Stockholm and in Malta. So we have a small uh, branch in Malta where 10 people reside. Yeah, and lots of the big operators are down there as well. What, what are, uh, and I'm, I'm guessing your customers are, 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 are global customers, could be anywhere, could they? Yeah, so we'd have the, the, all of the well-known established operators like uh, Ladbrokes, Bet365, Unibet, Betson. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have most of them, fortunately, on our, on our books. Fantastic. And look, um, I'd love to find out a little bit more about the uh, what a typical day in, looks like in your business. But I'm, I'm curious, what sort of how did the co-founding come about? How did the company? How was the company born? A long story. Um, so I always had this sort of dream of, of founding my own company, but sort of lacked the lacked the idea, I guess, and lacked the the right type of co-founder. So uh, I went on around. The first sort of quick spin round, trying to put a team together and try to secure funding, uh, didn't really succeed with that. So uh, uh, took a step back, reconsidered a bit, and then I then I ran into two old colleagues, or one old colleague of mine, uh, as well as an old customer of mine. So the old colleague of mine, we we, we went to speak to the third co-founder who was a customer. So we tried to get some insights into how how the business would work work if you were a newcomer and then he expressed an interest to join the three of us the two of us as well so so uh, we were three founders two from two from the um, development uh, space uh, from a competitor of quickspin and one one from unibet uh, one of our customers uh, and said and done we 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 teamed up to get together and, and founded the company six six years ago now that that was obviously six years ago now and i'm sure your role was a little bit different from when you first started the company what does it? What does the? What does a typical day in the business look like for you now as the as the as the CEO? It's very different now from what it was obviously six years ago. It's much more sort of less less hands on. I would say um, there's not. I would say there's not a sort of a single week or a single day that is sort of the same as the day before. And you don't really know what the week will entail. Uh, it's more sort of. Um, um, varies from one week to the other, but I tend to do, get dragged into matters that are sort of more critical, of more critical nature, and it can stretch from all parts of the business, from sales to product to development. But my job is mainly about solving problems these days than to actually do stuff. So uh, I often look back, look back at a week and think about what, what I've gotten done in a week. Uh, and it's mostly about, about helping others, uh, I would say, in the organization. Fantastic. And ho- hopefully sometimes to escape that Swedish uh, winter, you can pop down to Malta for a little bit of milder climate. Exactly. That was the reason for why we set up in Malta. You know? <laughs> um, can you name a person who's perhaps had a tremendous impact on you as a leader? Maybe it was even a mentor for you. Yeah, not really a particular sort of person, I would say. I think I've been fortunate to work alongside many different great managers and leaders and also co-workers where I've learned a lot from. So... I think in, in different parts of your career and in different parts of your life, you need different type of advice. Uh, you need different soundboards. Uh, and I think, you know, this was my first CEO job. And I think um, uh, being, being fortunate to work around many different talented people, uh, you tend to look at things in, in different ways, as opposed to if you're, if you're in sales or product, then you tend to look at things very sort of, Isolated, so mm-hmm. you you need to get more of an holistic view view as a CEO, and therefore you need to have you need to have different soundboards. Um, so there's not a sort of 
a single individual that I that I've sort of looked up to or I have been being mentored by someone specific, uh, but many different people in different different stages of stages of my career. I'd love to hear about what Quickspin are doing around employee engagement. Obviously, that's critical to the success of any company. What what have you been What have you been doing from the top to engage your employees? Yeah, so so I think so culture and employee engagement have been one of the cornerstones in Quickspin from day one. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Stockholm is super competitive when it comes to finding talent and keeping talent, and we don't we didn't have we we don't today or we didn't have back then the the sort of funds or the the deep pockets to attract or compete with the likes of Spotify or Klarna or King. Uh, so and that's when, when I think culture and employee engagement comes into play. Um, uh, so we, we try to keep up our, our you know corporate culture is important. Uh, I think it's uh, it's uh, being engaged is, is 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 having the feeling that you can I think sort of influence your work situation, uh, feeling that you're part of something, and that you can influence your work and how you do things. So if anything, we try to do that. We we try to keep our employees informed about what to do and why. Uh, give them the, again the ability to influence what they're doing and how they're doing it. Encourage them to take decisions on every on every day, um, uh, and rather have them to make decisions that are wrong than making no decisions at all. And I think that's that's if you work in a fast growing industry, uh, it's the sort of non decision making that can sort of slow an organization down or drain an organization yeah. in energy and drive. So encourage them to make. Uh, decisions and finally, I would say team spirit. Of course, uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but you know, having great team spirit will will will, will, um, will create the feeling that you're part of something and you're doing it to, together. Um, so that's obviously important. Um, and you can't really force people to like each other, but but I think what you can do as an employer is to try to create an environment where where um, you, have, you you put the framework in place for people to work closer together, and that's a matter of I think throwing celebrations or, or creating a structure where you work together, where you learn from each other. Uh, obviously, the classic kickoffs and the uh, and, uh, after work parties, uh, but also also yeah, creating good team spirit is is is, is crucial um, to us at least. Fantastic. What's what's the biggest challenge in your opinion facing business leaders today? Again, goes back to talent. Uh, about uh, good to great, uh, it was a matter of, uh, I think the, the, the key takeaway from that is, well, it doesn't really matter what idea you have, unless you have the right people on the bus, uh, the bus will go nowhere. Uh, and I think that's, that's true, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter if you have a great idea, if you don't have the right people to execute it, it doesn't matter. So so finding and keeping talent is, is, is key for any as, as a business today. Um, so yeah, so that's that's um, that's my answer. How do you help a new employee understand the culture of the company at Quickspin? What are you, what are you doing on the ground? Um, I don't think it's necessarily something that you can read up on or, or put into a brochure uh, or into a document and expect someone to understand it. This starts, I think, early on in the recruitment process, already in the interview process, to get a feeling for who the person is that you're employing and, and what what you as an employer are all about. Uh, so it's a matter of, 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 I think, interaction and talking a lot about it. Um, so for us, we start early on in, in the interview pro- process and, and it continues throughout the onboarding process where we make sure that you meet and interact with a lot of people throughout the organization to understand what the organization is all about and how we work. So it's a sort of learning by doing kind of thing. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily think also it stops with the with sort of with new employees. Culture is something that you need to carefully, um, what do you say, nurture and, and preserve, uh, especially if you you work in a fast growing organization like like Quickspin. I mean, we've grown from zero to seventy in six years, and culture can easily become something different than you originally intended it to be. So you need to constantly talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, to make sure it sort of it, it remains in the in the um, in the area that you want it to be. Daniel, what's the one mistake that you witness business leaders making more frequently than others that you've seen? I think it goes back to to um, I mean in our industry it's it's so rapidly changing and which I think goes for most most industries these days and 
there's a general thing. I think it's a lack of, of adaptability um, and uh, you know embracing change. Um, you know, typically, I think what what sort of what made us successful today is not not necessarily what will make us successful tomorrow. Uh, so I think you you constantly need to challenge yourself and what you're doing and try to systematically improve in all parts of your business. Um, so I guess the, the lack of, of, of not doing that is, is, is a common mistake for for uh, for not only leaders but organizations uh, as a whole. Uh, being a little bit sort of fat and happy uh, um, that's very dangerous for, for any organization. What following on from that? What's the sort of behavior, one behavior trait that you've noticed that's perhaps derailed more leaders' careers than others? Uh, so not a, I would say a particular particular behavior or trait, but I think if you're a CEO or, or any leader of a team, it's important that you obviously have trust from your team, and if you lose that trust, then you're on then you're on sort of on a dangerous ground. Mm-hmm. As a CEO, uh, I think it's the classical balance of, of uh, sort of balancing between strategic focus, looking at the bigger picture, whilst at the same time having your ear on the ground and, and sort of having a have a, con- a connection to the, the the operational activities that are going on. And if you lose if you lose sight of, of one or the other, uh, that's bad. Mm-hmm. So you need to balance both. I think. How, you know, your, your industry is changing rapidly, but also growing. <laughs> uh, how do you see your industry changing in the future? And how do you think that will affect your ability to attract and hire the best talent, whether that's in Sweden or, or Malta or, or, or elsewhere? Yeah, this, this is highly relevant for us as well, as we try to... I mean, Stockholm is a super competitive market, uh, so we look for talent worldwide today. Um, and I mean, I think we, we as, as many other companies, need to start re-evaluating a little bit how we look at talent. Today, we, we scope and search for talent worldwide. We try to persuade them to come to snowy Stockholm, uh, where it's dark and cold, or Malta, uh, um, uh, and try to bring them here, which has worked so far. But I think moving forward, employees will have more sort of demands and, and uh, and requests around flexibility and adaptability. And I think we as an employer need to change the view of talent, whereby instead of finding their, them uh, in a different part of the world and bringing them to Sweden, we need to do it the other way around. Whereas, you know, we find talent in China or in Australia or in, or in Africa, and we set up offices there. We, we make it work from their particular situation. And that requires an organization that sort of has the... I mean, we need to be organized in a way to, to, to handle that. Um, and I think that is, a, you know, a challenge and an opportunity. But I think that is the future of uh, many successful companies. That you need to, you need to, you know, adapt to the employee rather than the other way around. Daniel, thank you for sharing that. Some form of some form of workforce uh, mobility that uh, you need to look at there. Um, yeah. Daniel, thank you so much for that insight. I really appreciate it. What's just look, if people want to find out more about. Quick spin uh, or want to connect in with you, what's the best way people can do that? So, website uh, quickspin.com, um, any of the social media uh, pages that we're on Facebook or LinkedIn uh, or, or uh, Instagram. And if you want to connect with me, I'm on, on, I'm on LinkedIn, so feel free to reach out there. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Um,